circuit judge, the canons of judicial ethics will not allow me to solicit funds for anybody on behalf of any organization. So I have to give that to you. But I'm here today to glorify God, and that's what I'm here to do. Let me tell you about Fred Kelly. Since he brought it up, I'm going to tell you about it. Yes, he beat me to the heart attack. He had his at 44, I had mine at 41. But I'm going to tell you in Matthew 6, when Fred was talking about that, Jesus teaches us about money. And he says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And I'm going to tell you about Fred. You see, when I was laying in intensive care, not knowing if I was going to ever die, my daddy told me after I got out of the hospital that Fred Kelly was there, standing over my bed, unbeknownst to me, praying for me, praying for my survival, if that was God's will. And God saved me, and I had my 10-year anniversary last November. November the 7th, 2003, is a date that will always live with me. And so I, I keep that at, at heart. But today I'm here to tell you about the glory of God and how good God is. Because you know, as I look out, I see faces, and I see wonderful, beautiful faces. But y'all know, and I know, we all are going to face death. It's coming. You've got two choices. You're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. And none of us want to talk about that. Well, around the end of the summer, I noticed my dad was beginning to drop weight, and he's here today. But for the glory of God, he's here. And he began to drop weight, and I said to my wife, I noticed my dad was dropping weight. And so he went to the doctor, and the doctor said, Mr. Weaver, your white blood count's elevated. We want you to come back in a few weeks, and let's check it again. And he did. And guess what? His white blood count was even higher. So he said, Mr. Weaver, we want to send you to an oncologist. And so the oncologist came from Pensacola to Bruton, and the family, we got together, and we met. And uh, my two brothers are not here, but my sister's here today, <coughs> Mom and Betty. And so we met with an oncologist, and he kind of gave us a little hope. And so we were getting more testing, and we came back to meet with an oncologist sometime in October. And I don't have an exact date. But I know what he said when he walked in this room. He walked in the room, and he looked at us, and he said, Mr. Weaver, you got a bad act. And what I'm going to say to you is that you need to um, prepare to go home and be with the Lord. That's what he said. He said, Mr. Weaver, you got a bad actor, and uh, you'll probably make it to Thanksgiving, and you'll go home and enjoy your Thanksgiving with your family, and after that, that's it. Well, I had court here at Evergreen, so I was running late. I told them where I would be. And I left them down there. It was as if the doctor had just hit us between the head with a steel bar. I mean, go home. You've got a few weeks and that's it. So I, I came to court and I did my court. And I walked back out. And my judicial assistant said, Judge, what's wrong? And I said, no, the doctor just gave us no hope. Death is coming for daddy pretty quick. And so she started crying. And she's like my sister. She didn't cry at the drop of the hat, so she started crying. Well, here comes Michelle Black walking in from the clerk's office. And Michelle walks in, and she sees my judicial assistant crying, and I said, oh, 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 I hadn't said anything out of line to her, ugly to her. I, I, I got some bad news about my dad, so nothing's going on, Michelle. So then I, I told her, and uh, so my judicial assistant said, Judge, go back home and be with your family. And she was going. So I did. I got the car and I drove back to Brooklyn. And we, as an immediate family, stayed the, the, the day together. And, and the mother and daughter cried. And, and the boys, we tried to tell them, don't be crying. Because they were upset. They didn't see us upset. Well, I went back home and, and I got to thinking, this can't be it. This is only one man's opinion. Let's see what God has in store for us. So I got online. And I asked, uh, the computer is a wonderful thing in some certain ways. I asked, what clinical universities or hospitals were studying the rare type of cancer that he has? It's real rare. And uh, so I got back MD Anderson. That was it. 
So I picked up the phone, and it was Miller Neal football night in Bruton. And you know how Bruton is about Miller Neal football. Well, Mom and Daddy was at home, and Jolene had to be at their house. So I called my sister, and I said, Jolene, Daddy needs to go to MD Anderson. And uh, so she mentioned it to Daddy, and Daddy said, it's not going to help. The doctor's already given me no hope. I'm not going to be here. And uh, so Jolene's daughter is a dentist. So I text her, encourage Daddy to go to MD Anderson. So she did. So I told Jolene, get online, enroll Daddy in MD Anderson, and I will get the transportation. She said, how are you going to get transportation? I said, pilots for Christ. I've seen them. I've flown with them. I know what they do. I know how, what a blessing it is. You see, there are so many people sick with cancer, and we're all affected by it. But people can't stand, sit, in, I mean, sit in a car for a 10-hour drive to Houston when they're sick with cancer. People can't sit in a commercial airport when they're sick with cancer and wait to board a plane and to get through an airport to get to the hospital. Well, pilots for Christ, in, in, in Daddy's situation, Jolene and Mama have traveled every trip. Jolene has driven in from Bruton to Monroe. They've got stepped on a plane and they've left. And they've flown from Monroe, Alabama for about an hour and 45 minutes to Houston, Texas. And they fly back. But before that plane ever puts wheels up or wheels down, there's prayer. There's prayer for the person on board. There's prayer that God's will will be done and God will give safe travel. And that's what we see happening. So how has Pilots for Christ affected my life? It, I didn't ever think when I started helping Pilots for Christ years ago that it would ever affect me personally. You see, God has blessed us all. And, and in that, he, he makes us be accountable for what we do with our funds and our money. So Tommy Lee called me one day and said, Jack, years ago, can you go with me? I was at the law office. He said, can you go with me to Virginia? Take a family back. And I said, well, Tommy, I got some appointments I can move. So I went to my secretary, got her to move, and she moved. He said, come right now. I got the plane running, and I got your sub sandwich sitting in the coat by the seat. Now, anybody that knows anything about me knows I'm scared of heights. <laughs> Except I love to fly. Now, ain't that crazy? I can get in the plane and look out the window, and it doesn't bother me. But if you put me up on where the sound guy is this morning, I'd have, I'd, my hands start sweating. So anyway, I got on board and we took a family back to Virginia from MD Anderson. And the man had cancer. And I saw right then how much Pilots for Christ cares for people and loves people. And they're not doing it for their own satisfaction and glory. They're doing it because they love Jesus Christ. And that's why they're doing it. And so how has it affected me? It has affected our whole family in that they have transported daddy time after time after time and, and they don't ask you for a dime. In fact, the other day, Fred, Tommy Lee left Monroe with Johnny and Rosalind Sales on board and they flew into the storm going to Houston just the other day. This storm that came past this weekend, they flew into the storm 50 miles and Jolene drove them from Houston to Lake Charles and met them. And they flew out of the storm home. God is good. God puts us in storms, but he also sees us out. Because we in this church who are Christians know that there's a better life and a better place for us. And we'll all face it one day when God's ready for us. And, and, and so I'm just thankful for all of the people that donate time. Fred has been on board with Daddy. Fred has sat in the back with Mom and Daddy and laughed with them, joked with them, cried with them. Help Daddy get off the plane. And, and, and Fred is a strong part of that ministry. But there are many other people involved in Pilots for Christ. And I thank them for what they do. And it is a blessing. And uh, it's, not, it's not just located for folks here in Monroe County, Connecticut County. They fly people all over the, this country. And in two hours, you can be halfway across this country. In fact, when the when the natural disaster happened in Haiti, they were on board carrying medical supplies to Haiti. That's what they do. They don't care who it is. When the call comes out, they love Christ and they're going to support 
the folks that need help in the love and name of Jesus Christ, and they should share with others. So that's that's my story. Now, I, I told Fred that I could uh, give my testimony, but he said, no, that keep it to five minutes and sit down. <laughs> okay, hey, Brother Jack, thank y'all. Thank you, Jack.